Amen, 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 amen. Let's appreciate the Lord for He has brought us. It is the Spirit that has brought us here for a reason. Praise the Lord. Our God is good. And all the time, that is His nature. He never changes. He's good. He's loving. He's powerful. He's all I ever need. I need Him every minute of my life. Thank you for coming to seek Him with me. Thank you for coming, Lord. I pray that you minister to us. May the Lord minister to you through his word. Praise the Lord. And our viewers who are viewing us online, you are most welcome. Thank you, thank you so much for taking time to log in. Be expectant in your heart, in your comfort place there where you are, in your home, in your chair, in your car, in your office, in your business place. Thank you for logging in. The Lord is here. Praise the Lord. We are going to read the book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 2. Habakkuk chapter 2, if you can project that portion of scripture. Habakkuk chapter 2, and we will read from verse 9 to verse 14. Habakkuk chapter 2 from verse 9 to verse 14. And I request that we read together. Let's read together that portion of scripture before us. Woe to him who builds his room by unjust gain to set his nest on high to escape the clutches of ruin. Next verse. You have plotted the ruin of many people, shaming your own house and forfeiting your life. The stones of the wall will cry out and the beams of the woodwork will echo it. Woe to him who builds a city with bloodshed and establishes a town by crime. Has not the Lord Almighty determined that the people's labor is only fuel for the fire, that the nations exhaust themselves for nothing, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Praise the Lord. That is the reading. That is the word of the Lord. He begins by saying that war to him who gets evil gain for his house, for his family, that war to him. Doomed is that person who gets gain through evil schemes or who has what the Bible has called evil gain for his household. Friends, God is a loving God. He loves us so dearly that he brings his perfect word at the right timing. Perhaps he sees you and me looking here and there. All we want is gain, but how do we get the gain? All we have is a need, but how is that need being fulfilled? How is it being met? The word of the Lord is saying that woe to him who gets evil gain for his house, for his family. To set his nest on high, to be safe from the reach of harm. Woe to that person. Woe to that person. Because you want to reach here. So you do whatever it takes because you want to reach a certain level. You do whatever you have to do, whether good or bad. The Bible is saying that be careful on how you are gaining that which you have. Be careful on what you have as gain. Is that gain coming out of evil schemes? The word of the Lord says that woe to him, that person, who gets what the Bible has called as evil gain, or evil profit, or evil benefit, or evil wealth, 
or accumulating things out of evil schemes war to that person. Praise the Lord. That which you have, how have you accumulated it? That which we have, how are we getting it? War to the person who gets evil gain for the household. He again says that you have devised shame for your house by cutting off many people. You have forfeited your life for the stone will cry out from the wall and the beam from the woodwork respond. War to that person again who builds a town with blood and finds a city on iniquity. Wow, this is tough. Now this book of Habakkuk, Habakkuk was a prophet. And this time he was disturbed by the many injustices that were going on. Hallelujah. And so he was making a prayer at this point of time. This was shortly before the Babylonian invasion of Judah. He was making this kind of of prayer out of concern, out of a burden that he had, that he was seeing whatever that was taking place. And this is the Lord speaking to Habakkuk to pass on the message. Praise the Lord. His heart was that there will be a remnant of the people that were living in, in Judah that will keep their heads high and remain faithful to God amidst the challenges, amidst the storms that were happening. That was his burden. And the Lord is giving us this strong warning, friends, that war to the person who gets evil gain, war to the person who makes their houses be set on high like a nest on high, war to that person who is building their house out of bloodshed, out of evil, out of murder, out of theft, out of deceit, out of every kind of wicked schemes that you can imagine. War to that person. Praise the Lord. In this life, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ told his disciples that in this life, you will have tribulations, you will have challenges, but take heart, I have overcome the world. You will overcome. There are those situations that come that you get a temptation of being tempted to have what the Bible is calling evil gain. You know for sure that it is sinful before the Lord to do that. But because you have a pressing need, because you have a pressing challenge around you, you want to do whatever it takes. If it is to lie, if it is to call someone on phone and, and forge a huge lie, you do it. If it is to do what uh, the Bible calls bloodshed, you are ready. I have seen lots of things happening, praise the Lord. Where people give up their own people just because they want wealth. I have ever prayed for a girl, a little girl of senior two by then. The, the stepmother had sacrificed her because she wanted wealth. And so while praying for this girl, the demons began to manifest. And I asked them where they were coming from. And they mentioned the name of the stepmother. And I asked why they had come. And they said that because she, has, she took care of her, so when we asked her for a child, she gave us this one. In, in exchange for wealth, people are willing to give up their own. People are willing to give up the, to give up to give in their stepchildren. People are willing to give in their, you know, their, their, their relatives. If again, if again, accumulation out of wickedness, accumulation of wealth out of wickedness, procuring wicked gain for one's family to move from one level to another. People are willing to do anything. How is it with you, my brother, my sister? When you have a storm around you as a family, what do you do? The word of the Lord is saying that war unto everyone, 
that person who accumulates evil gain. War unto that person who sets his nest on high. War unto that person who devises shame for their house. War unto that person who is, who is building their town, who is building their city, who is building their family out of iniquity, out of bloodshed. Praise the Lord. Whatever we have, the question is, how are we getting it? Wow, it's reflection time. It is reflection time. Tell your neighbor it is reflection time. May the Lord search our hearts and point to that very person and point to that very need and point to that very aspect where you know that has been evil gain. There's nothing that satisfies that getting something out of clean hands. It satisfies one's soul. Praise the Lord. In a wicked and evil generation, in an era like this where there's a lot of evil happening around, the word of the Lord is so clear that woe unto that person who gets evil gain to set themselves and their entire family and household on high. This applies to every one of us. Every one of us comes from a family. Every one of us has a need. Every one of us at some point is challenged. And how do you get out of there? Is it out of deceit, my brother? Is it out of telling a lie? Is it out of deception? Is it out of going out to do immolarity? Is it out of robbing someone? What exactly it is in your life? Praise the Lord. It is amazing. It is amazing. Verse 14. Let's project that verse 14, which is the center of our sharing this afternoon. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. A time is coming when the world will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God. In Isaiah chapter 11 verse 9, it also says that the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord. A time is coming when the knowledge of the Lord will be known by everyone, every living creature. A time is coming when the sovereignty of God, when the power of God, when the glory of God shall be covered on the whole universe. That time is coming. No one knows the hour. No one knows the time. But you and I have a privilege of having an idea of that glory because of Christ Jesus, the rock of our salvation, the redeemer of our lives, the shepherd of our souls, the one who changes situations, the one who challenges every challenge, the one who comes every storm. You and I have the privilege because of our Christ Jesus who lives forever. And because he lives, you and I can face tomorrow with all victory. Praise the Lord. Tell yourself that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. You can do all things. We can do all things. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I do not have to give in to the enticing words of the enemy. I do not have to, be, to, to, to conform to the standards of this world, to the standards that have a lot of deception, to the standards that have a lot of evil, just because I want to be there. Praise the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. Tell your neighbor, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is the creator of heaven and earth. All the silver and the gold belongs to him, my brother, my sister. Get out of that cocoon of deception. Get out of every kind of compromise and live for Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. He gave up all it takes to redeem your life and to redeem my life. He gave up himself. He paid a price. Praise the Lord. And a time is coming, my sister, my brother, a time is coming when the whole earth 
will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God. That every living creature, old and young, male and female, youth, old, young, a child, we will all know that there's a living God. We will all know that there's a redeemer. We will all know that the glory of God is real. Praise the Lord. That time is coming. It's an assurance that the time is coming. And friends, we have a privilege. You and I have a privilege. What a privilege that we have to be called children of God. We have a privilege. I do not know if you take a moment of time to know that you have a glimpse of the knowledge of the glory of God by simply accepting Christ in your life and living inclined to the word of God. He is the word of God. Praise the Lord. Just reflect on your life and your personal work. Reflect on your personal work, my friend. Our God is sovereign. And his sovereignty, his sovereignty, the sovereignty of God, the power of God, he's called the God of heaven and earth. He owns it all. He owns it all. He owns your life. He owns my life. He can do it for you, my sister, my brother. He can do it for you, irrespective of how big it looks like. Time is coming when the whole universe will know that he is Lord. For every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. A time is coming when everyone will surely say that he has the word of the Lord. That he's a child of God. That she's a child of God. That she's a child of God. Because of how you move and how you live your life. Praise the Lord. Then they will say that you no longer live, but Christ lives in you. The earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God. Friends, there are two things here for you and I to take on. And the very first one is we are going to disconnect ourselves. We are going to be deliberate on disconnecting ourselves from every kind of lifestyle, from every kind of thing, from every kind of habit, from every kind of company, from every kind of thing that surrounds us. You know yourself better. Disconnect yourself from every aspect that is evil in the sight of God. You know, this heart is deceitful, my friends. The heart is deceitful. Even when we say, Lord, Lord, you are Lord of our lives, the heart is deceitful. But you know what? The Lord knows our inside out. He knows us. He knows that there's this one thing that you struggle with just because you want to gain out of it. Totally surrender to Christ. Totally surrender to knowing the Lord in your life. Totally surrender to the Lordship of Christ. Let the Lord live in your life, friends. Our God is sovereign. Let's disconnect ourselves from any company. Let's disconnect ourselves from every kind of situation that is compromised before the eyes of the Lord. You know, he's always looking at us. His eyes are always looking at around us, looking at us. What we are saying, what we are doing, what we are thinking, what we are going through, he knows us. What I love most about this God is that he loves us all. He's a loving God, friends. He's an amazingly a loving God that even when he sees whatever we are doing, he brings in this word that you and I may disconnect ourselves from everything that is called evil gain. Praise the Lord. There's a lot of spirit of compromise that goes around. And so number two, item number two, let's be spiritual alert in prayer. Let's be spiritual alert in prayer, my friends. We can only know that actually this is evil when we have the spirit of God living in our lives. 
We cannot have this spiritual sensor in our lives, my dear brother, sister, if we are not living in the presence of the Lord and ceasingly let's seek the Lord all the time and always. He says that whoever seeks me will find me. Whoever seeks me will surely find me. I am here for you. Whoever seeks me will find me. I am standing always at the door of your heart, knocking, just wanting you to acknowledge me. Shall we acknowledge the power of God in our situations, friends? There are people when they get challenged in life, they easily give up. They easily give up. The things of God delay. Things of God take time. Things of God, I don't understand them. And there are believers who give up. There are believers who are at the verge of giving up because perhaps the Lord has not answered yes to their prayer for a long time. My friends, even us who are watching online, our God is sovereign. Just a little time, in his beautiful time, he will make things all beautiful for you. Do not allow your heart to be anxious and so live in a life of compromise. There's a lot of compromise that gets on. I am very, very challenged and burdened in my heart where I find a believer is a believer, but also into witchcraft. A believer is a believer in the names of believer, but is also into immorality. A believer is a believer, but also in all sorts of evil schemes because they are looking for what? Evil gain. Our God is powerful. Let's, let, let's increase your faith. Item number three. As I wind up, your challenge, your storm, your situation, your family, your business, your marriage, your employment, there is nothing that is hidden before the Lord. And so item number three, I'm saying increase your faith in the sovereign God and then you see the sovereignty of, his God, of this God that I'm talking about. Praise the Lord. Our God is sovereign. Tell your neighbor, our God is sovereign. Our God is sovereign. If we can only have an idea of the sovereignty of God, then we'll stop to doubt him. Then we'll stop to give our lives in a double standard life. Lukewarm Christianity. Praise the Lord. We will totally surrender to the leading of the Holy Spirit. We will totally surrender to the Lordship of Christ. Our God is sovereign. Praise the Lord. He is able to do that which you think is hard. He is able to, to get you out of that situation. That is the sovereignty of God. That is the glory of God that the word of the Lord is saying. The whole earth will know, surely know that the glory of God is alive in your life. The earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God. This was a prophecy by the servant of God, Habakkuk, that the time is coming when the whole earth, when your whole village will know that the glory of God is in your family. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Just have your faith lifted up. It only takes a simple faith, as small as a mustard seed, to change every situation that surrounds you. It only takes a little bit of faith. A little bit of faith. Tell yourself, a little bit of faith. A little bit of faith and I'll be out of this. By faith, Abraham accepted to give his son, Isaac, to make him lie, to, to be offered. By faith, he did that. And the Lord stopped him and then gave him a bull by the side. By faith, Sarah was able to have a child at the age of 90. By faith, Daniel was thrown in the lion's den. But he knew that he served a God who can move all situations. That is Daniel. By faith, Anna was able to hang on. She hung on in there. She was patiently seeking the Lord. By faith, she conceived when all hope was gone around her. When there was a lot of malice and every situation around her, when there's a lot of sarcastic, a sarcastic uh, a co wife, and I was able to get a child. By faith, by faith, my brother, my sister, Esther went into prayer with fasting, and the whole situation changed. Instead of, of Mordecai being hanged, it was Haman. Praise the Lord. It takes a little bit of faith to know that there is a God. 
a God who is alive, a God who is powerful, a God who can do all things, a God who does all impossibilities. Praise the Lord. Sometimes, let me tell you, sometimes when we read scripture, there's a temptation to think, but is this God real? But is this God real? Is it God really who does miracles? Really, is God alive? Is, going, is God going to see me through this situation? A little bit of faith. Tell your neighbor a little bit of faith. And your situation will be changed upside down. A little bit of faith. And the whole world, the whole earth, the whole universe will be filled of the knowledge of the glory of God. Praise the Lord. When he sees, when they see what the Lord is doing in your life, when they see the situation changing, when they see things that we are moving, now they are different. When they see a person who was here is now in a better place, they will all be marveled. And they say, the God of this person is alive. They will say, yeah, God is alive. God is powerful. And the time is coming, my friend, when the whole world we know and acknowledge. Remember that the Bible again says that all the universe, everyone that has breath, all of us, everyone, all shall kneel to the Lordship of Christ. For every knee shall kneel and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. The glory of God is revealed to humanity through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have an opportunity. Tell your neighbor you have a great opportunity to have a glimpse of the glory of God. Jesus is the glory of God in our lives. Jesus is the glory of God revealed to us as humanity. I pray that you open your heart fully to the leading of the Lord. I pray that you open your life fully to the Lordship of Christ. I pray that you open your heart fully to the leading of the Spirit of the living God. Praise the Lord. For the world will know the glory of God. The world will know the glory of God. The hand of God will be upon your life. The hand of God will be upon your works. The hand of God will be upon your family. The hand of God will be upon your children. The hand of God is going to change your story. The word of God is going to change everything about you. The word of God is going to give you a new song to sing of victory. Then the word will see the glory of God in your life because you have Christ Jesus who died, who resurrected, and so everything will be down, will bow down to him. Nothing will hold him captive. No sickness will hold him captive because death could not hold him captive. Your situation is not going to hold him captive. The world will see the hand of God in your life. Only if you fully give your life to Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. A little bit of faith. Again, there are three things. Let's detach ourselves Disconnect ourselves from everything that is wicked. If it is wicked company, disconnect yourself from it. If it is some wicked scenario you know you have been in, get out of it, my brother, my sister. It has to be taken a deliberate step for you to do that. And number two, let's be spiritually alert through prayer. Number three, I have said a little bit of faith and that will change every situation that you're in. Praise the Lord. Let's get on our feet. Let's get on our feet and begin to pray for yourself. You know yourself most. I don't know about you, but Christ knows about you. Our Savior knows about you. He sees what no eye can see. He perceives what no mind can perceive. He sees exactly what is on your mind. He sees exactly what is in your heart. And so I know you have come into this lunch hour because you have something to tell the Lord. So you go ahead and tell him. He's able. He's a God that is able. 
you are able, Lord. You are able. As we sing this song, go ahead in prayer and totally surrender to Christ Jesus, to the Lordship of Christ. The glory of God is revealed to us through Jesus Christ. And so, just lift those hands and totally surrender to the Lord. And tell him, Lord, you are able. Tell him, Lord, you are able. I surrender all to you, Lord, because you are able. You are able to change my situation, Lord. You are able to make something new in my life, O oh Lord. You are able, King of glory, to change my name. You are able, Lord. You are able. You are able. You are able, Son of God. You are able. You are able. You are able. Raise those hands and tell him you are able, Lord. You are able. 